welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-46. Our last episode found Sister Elaine reaching the local church only to find that the pastor was gravely ill. Despite curative attempts by the acolyte, the head of the church was near death's door. The party cleric did remember that the group was in possession of a wand of healing that they had gotten a hold of in Phoenix, but as she arrived back at the Comstock Inn, she discovered that the room had been burgled and the thief was attacked by Peepers the Axebeak. Using the creature as a bloodhound, the pair went after the thief and created a massive disturbance in the process. We rejoin the group as they have the thief cornered behind the city watch. Panting and near complete exhaustion, Bulger raced up to join the rest of his group. Sister Elaine, Lady Arena, and Fargus Stoutheart are angrily confronting a group of guards who are pointing spears at Peepers, the Axebeak, as Karina and Cabe pull on the makeshift harness to drag the creature back. With hands on his knees, the sailor attempts to catch his breath and tries to speak just as he is pushed out of the way by a cadre of men, including Horatio Mellon, Magistrate of Colby. The town leader quickly surveys the issue and orders the party and the guards to step back, demanding to know what is going on. As everyone attempts to speak at the same time, the thief attempts to slip into the crowd but is stopped at dagger point by Bulger the sailor, who spotted him. Giving the man a little stab caused him to yell out, making the others go quiet. Horatio points at the bleeding man and says, We'll start with you! What in the Hades is going on here? Sister Elaine attempts to speak, but gets an open hand calling for silence by the magistrate. The scared and bleeding man then gives a stuttering speech with, <coughs> Well, uh, <coughs> you see here, Mr. Mayor, I, uh, <coughs> I was, uh, I was uh, lost. Yeah, lost. And, but his speech was cut short by an irate Sister Elaine. Lost in our room, you lying thief. Fargus. Rip off his arms. Fargus stepped forward, but two spear points at his neck made him hesitate. Shaking his head, the magistrate again calls for calm. With the crowd gathering around the leader, he considered his options before ordering the thief, Sister Lane, and a small group of guards to accompany him inside the fabric business that they were standing in front of. Peepers lashed out as the thief passed by, causing the guards to bristle and the thief to jump out of one of his boots before scurrying inside. The rest of the guards stood at the ready, uncertain as to how to handle this group of seasoned adventurers and the man killing Axebeak. Once the thief had disappeared from sight, Karina stroked the creature's head slightly, causing it to audibly coo and relax. The citizens gathered around were entranced by both the creature and its handler. A small child wandered out of the crowd and tugged at Karina's pants, causing everyone, including Peepers, to look down. Can I pet your dog? asked the small child. The waif looked at her companions who gave a mixture of emotions. She considered the request for a moment and turned back to the large bird. Whispering something to the creature, it leaned over and allowed the child to stroke its neck. It's rough, exclaimed the child to a gasping crowd. Peepers cooed loudly before shaking out its feathers and standing back up. The child drifted back into the crowd of people who were more curious than ever about the creature. One by one, spectators approached and asked Karina if they too could pet the bird. In spite of the crowd closing in on them, Peepers maintained his composure and allowed people to gently stroke its feathers. After several minutes of examining the oddity, the door to the fabric store opened and Sister Elaine ran out, going back down the street towards the church. The group called out to her, but she did not stop. Fargus nodded to Cabe, and he and Lady Irena gave chase towards the clerics determined to keep her safe. Several guards exited the building with the thief in tow, and Horatio Mellon exited and demanded to know why the man-killer was in town. As he blustered out his statement, he was taken aback to see the guard captain, 
softly stroking its neck as Peepers rubbed his massive beak on the shaft of the guard's spear. The captain quickly regained his composure as the magistrate shook his head. Waving for everyone to go about their business and enjoy the festival, he motioned to the guards. The men formed a wall behind the party members and began to move the crowd back into the street towards the festivities. Fargus looked back at the magistrate, who took a big bite out of a candied apple and was quite annoyed. Well, he demanded. Horatio held up a finger to pause questions and finish his bite. Clearing his throat, he gave an explanation. <sighs> Apparently, the Reverend Daughter caught that man breaking into one of your rooms. She and your thief-sniffing creature, as he pointed to Peepers, gave chase and cornered him here. He was caught red-handed with a stolen wand from your room. Sister L Elaine, corrected Karina. Yes, yeah, Sister Elaine, my apologies. Found the shepherd of our church in bad shape and thinks that the wand can save his life. The item was returned to her and she moved quickly to save Pastor Lauren's life. Since your uh, pet does not seem to be a public nuisance to anyone other than thieves, it would seem that there is no recourse for you bringing it into Colby. The magistrate took another bite of his apple and scowled before continuing. I would remark that it would have been nice for you to claim the bird when you came into town so that we all weren't so frightened. You know these things kill men, don't you? Fargus stepped up and apologized, stating that the man was right and they should have declared the creature. He went on to explain that in its current state of youth, it is hardly a man killer. Horatio laughed after swallowing a large chunk of apple and pointed at Fargus. <laughs> Tell that to Balin the thief. He soiled himself. And he got a nasty cut from your row. Uh, watchbird. Karina scratched Peeper's head, causing it to coo loudly again as Bolger and Fargus nodded in agreement. As the magistrate finished up his apple, he wiped his hands on his pants and clasped his hands together. So, with that information, I will respectfully request that the creature be taken back to the room and secured there. It didn't get out the first time, so I trust it won't get out on its own. Take reasonable precautions and enjoy the festival. Any questions? Karina, the ranger, and the sailor all looked at each other and shook their heads. The magistrate got to his feet and began to walk through the trio when he spotted the axe beak staring at him. The man detoured quickly behind Fargus for safety and headed off down the street to meet with other citizens. Karina had an epiphany and yelled to the leader, Sir, where is the church? Horatio gave a hand motion, and the trio waved to him. Bolger spoke first, stating that they should secure Peepers, then go find Elaine and the elven folk. Then dinner, pointed out Fargus, as his stomach began to growl. Everyone shook their heads in agreement, and headed back to the Comstock Inn. We close out this episode now, and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at... The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.